So we'll call the meeting to order for Wednesday, November 4th, 2020. And uh, just got a couple of things we have to go over uh, based on the governor's uh, orders. We have to announce that this meeting is in fact being recorded in its entirety. Uh, we also have to do roll call votes for all votes that will be taken. So Jennifer will go ahead and call roll call votes anytime there's a motion in the second and we move to a vote. Um, I also have to announce who's in attendance from the board. Uh, I have to name everybody. I can't just say that the entire board is here. So we have Christian Stanley, we have Jane Nevinsmith, John Muskevitz, Joyce Chunglo, and myself, David Phil. And then uh, I don't know if we need to announce, but David Nixon is here as the deputy town administrator as well. So, all right, so we'll get started. And we're waiting on warrants, so why don't we take care of public comments first? Is anybody here for public comments this evening? I have a public comment. Go ahead. And that is that is the Sugar Shack has very generously offered a free Thanksgiving dinner to any senior in Hadley. They need to call the senior center to uh, get their name on the list, and the fire department will be delivering it on Wednesday, the twenty fifth of November. That is very nice. It is very generous. Very generous. Maybe this is a good time for us also to um, thank uh, our registrars, Jessica Spankenabel, um, the fire department, Mike, um, everyone that was involved with voting yesterday and the senior center. Jane, you also for uh, setting up and taking down and making sure everything ran smoothly. Um, there was many excellent um, comments yesterday. So um, kudos to all that participated and thank you very much. This is a great town to be in because we really do things the right way. So thank you. Yeah, we had what, over 3000 and uh, it went no problems. So it was good. It went very smoothly. And there were lots of people coming into the new building for the first time and they were quite impressed. Yes, there were those comments also, so good job. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, while we're waiting for the warrants, uh, Carolyn, if you're all set, do you wanna hit the um, town administrator report real quick? I kind of gave the update on um, the new, new Zoom procedures of roll call votes and, and things along those lines, but if you wanna hit anything for an administrator update or do you need a minute? No, I'm fine. I didn't, I was, uh, today I was in the procurement class, which will take place from today until Friday. So I, I don't have a, a large amount of information to share. Um, but um, just, uh, I, I, you touched on trunk or treat, I met, is that what you guys were talking about? We did that last time. Yeah. We were talking about the um, registration, the thanking everybody for participating and, um, uh, and doing a great job yesterday for the voter turnout and registration. Yeah, what a great team you have. They're great. Um, and also oh, also North Sugar Shack, North Hadley Sugar Shack is offering yeah. a free Thanksgiving dinner to any senior in Hadley. And it will be delivered thanks to the fire department on Wednesday the 25th. People should call the senior center if they're interested. Nice. Yeah, so I'll just um, just update. Uh, was in the procurement class, and um, just to recap what what I what was taking up my time last week, but just getting ready for um, the special town meeting, get, getting more comfortable with the budget numbers with David. Um, but also, I was invited um, last Friday um, by Amy Fiden to do a meet and greet at a bank ESB, and did not expect the winter weather. Um, but it was a really nice time for us to meet. I got to meet some customers and Sugar Shack provided the hot cider. And so that was really nice. It was nice to be out in the community, freezing cold, but then went back to uh, back to the office and warmed up and then went um, to the trunk or treat, which was great. So um, I really don't have too much just because uh, the procurement class was taking up some time, but so. Would you like to expand down at this time about the uh, how town meeting will be run next week, next Saturday? 
Well, I think we'll talk about that when we do the special town meeting. Okay. The, the warrant review. Okay. So uh, in the meantime, let's do, um, let's jump down to 7.2 for the driveway re request for Middle Street. Uh, sure. Caroline, you had a little bit of an update on that one. I did. Last week, the select board, you requested some input from Annie McKenzie regarding the request from the owners of 113 Middle Street and its impact on the future development, possibly of fields or any projects for the school. So also. I did reach out to Annie and um, she reached out to um, their own, uh, the school uh, legal counsel, as well as members of the school committee and um she, it was pretty clear that they would, they need some more information before they could really give any um, feedback. They had some concerns. So my recommendation would be to um, have the select board suggest that that go back to maybe go to the school committee so that they can ask some questions to the owners of, uh, to the resident at 113 Middle Street and go over some more specifics. They just didn't feel like they had enough information. That's fine. Do we need a motion for that or can we, uh, I see Mr. Lee's here, so. Um. I guess no no comment to me. I, that's if, if they need, if we need to talk to the school committee, then then that, that will be fine. Okay, so uh, we'll let you get, get with them. Um, and then if you do need to come back in front of us, then we're, we're happy to entertain that at the time. Well, I guess I do, one, one question I do have on that then, so. Is it, is there any way we can get a motion from the select board um, saying that if it's okay with the school committee, we can move forward and uh, Bill and the planning board can review our application given the, um, the entering the vehicular access to the property through the side lot line? I personally, I would want to wait to see what the school committee has to say first before we kind of lock them into anything or make a suggestion one way or another? I, you know, I was all right with the plan and looking at it, it's not going to block the right of way of what they've already built for an entrance into the back property of the school. Is it? That was my question. I, I, no, I, looked so. at it. I looked at it again today and the sidewalk is about 10 feet to the South of where their driveway is. Okay. So it's not, it, I couldn't tell by the way that there was a, uh, a circle around where I thought maybe that's where they wanted their parking, but it, and it looked like it was uh, in the area of where that roadway has already been put. So it's actually off to the side of it. It's correct? to the north of that. Yes. Okay. All right. The other but thing, Mister. The other thing, Mister. Lee, is the school board does meet tomorrow at five thirty. If you can try to get on, talk to the superintendent tomorrow. See if they can squeeze you in. Okay. Um, Somebody have something? I was just going to tell uh, Chris that I would email him Dr. McKenzie's contact information so he can get in touch with her. Okay. Um, so I guess, is, is it the opinion that we, after we solicit feedback from the school board, we will come back to the select board uh, for a formal motion to be able to continue to use that land and to give Bill Dwyer and the planning board permission to um, to have the slight violation of the zoning bylaw? That would be my understanding of how the process should work. I just um, uh, I just want to make sure it's okay with the schools since that's you know they control the area. So let's let's just go through that process, and if they're okay with it, we can come back and have that final discussion for the from the board. Okay, I will, uh, I will circle up with Jennifer then and get the information um, for the superintendent and see if we can talk to them tomorrow night. Okay, Sounds thanks, good. sir. All right, thank you. Okay, so uh, we'll move back up to uh, 2.1, the consent agenda. We have warrants AP2199, AP2199S, AP2199-2, AP2120-V, PR2109, PR2110, Hadley Police Department recognition for Special Police Officer Tenzin Kenrab. And that's a consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent correction, agenda. Correction. 
Uh, go ahead. Uh, David, I, I, Joan, uh, Jennifer, and I were doing this over the phone. Um, the ones that you said two one nine nine, they were two one one nine. Okay. Sorry. Uh, let me let me read them the right way, just to so we're covered. AP two one one nine, AP two one one nine S, AP two one one nine dash two, AP two. Oh, I'm sorry, two one. 20-V, PR2109, and PR2110. So those are the corrected warrants. So moved. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have a motion by Joyce, second by Chris, and Jennifer roll call. Roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? You got to say yes. Jane. Unmute. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and with Skevitz. Yes. All eyes. Thank Sounds good. Uh, let's move down to library fire station and senior center update 7.1. Uh, I see. Let's do with library first. All right. I can, we, we had a meeting yesterday with the library um trustees slash building committee and fire chief the um building inspector and whatnot uh just to try to get on the same page about things and hopefully now we can communicate a little bit better um a little more streamlined you know mike and uh tommy can communicate directly with Mark or with me and then Mark, however it might go. Um, but they had to, after the discussion, they met on site today and basically there's some issues with the parking lot that they're correcting. They're planning on paving tomorrow, but because of those issues, they're not able to pave until next week sometime or maybe the 14th. So you might be doing a special town meeting while they're paving the uh, library parking lot, um, but it's coming up and uh, a lot of the other issues looks like that's being addressed as well right now that the building inspector had. Um, the only other thing is I guess the library was shut down today um, because of possible COVID exposure, but I just want to make it clear the library made human resources aware of the situation yesterday and um, followed all the procedures the town had yesterday. And then it seems like it was found out again today. And then the library was shut down kind of without HR's, um, uh, of course, uh, without HR being aware of it being shut down. So just if we're Talking COVID, I don't know what our procedure is in town right now, but trying to make that very clear, you know, if there's a possible exposure of COVID, are we shutting down an entire building or are we, you know, I think they basically said, why don't you stay at home until you get a test that's negative and then go from there um, as opposed to just shutting the whole facility down. And I think that's... Usually everybody that comes in contact with that person needs to have a COVID test. Yeah, and I'm not, a, I'm not intimately aware of the situation. However, I do know that, you know, procedures were followed uh, yesterday yeah. with the library and, and communicating right. with HR and those kind of things. But did, did people communicate with the Board of Health? Because tra tracing needs to be done on anybody that has COVID. You have to know who the person was and who they had contact with. Yeah, so and, th then you go from there. And, th and then uh, the library trustees are meeting basically as we're meeting. So I'm not sure what the whole situation was that went down um, as far as what you're saying, Joyce. So I think you just need to make sure everybody in town departments knows what the procedures are. And, you know, it's communicated across so people are aware. Can you, ju can you just say you don't have to violate any HIPAA? Was it a uh, company that was working for doing the building or was it uh, personnel? I believe it was a personnel, but um, okay. I'm not 100% sure. I'm That's sure okay. there are others that know more than I do, and I don't want to get anybody in trouble or any HIPAA violations. So 
Well, we do, you know, um, when, when those things happen and somebody is COVID testing HR, since we don't have got an occupational health department, um, we have to depend on emergency management um, or Mike Spink and able to follow direction or the board of health. So those people at any time in any of our departments need to be um, notified when anything like that happens. So I don't, I know what that department. I know that Patrick has talked to Dr. Moser. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I mean, we, we have to follow the right protocol. I don't care what department it is that we have to have board of health and emergency management involved with it. So yeah. So if I can just interject, I was in the meeting uh, in the class all day today, but there was conversations throughout the day. Uh, protocol was um, followed based on the information that became more accurate towards the end of the day. It was not somebody who was exposed to somebody with COVID. It was a, someone who was exposed to somebody who was exposed to a positive test of COVID. Mm -hmm. So there is a protocol. We, I, uh, it's in that reopening plan. We do have a plan in place um, and HR was uh, contacted and there was conversations that took place throughout the day with myself, with David Nixon, um, and uh, uh, Deborah, so that that was put in place. Um, but I think there was some information going around in the beginning of the day that wasn't as accurate. So um, all those, all of that was put in place when we followed the protocol that was voted on last uh, last week. Okay, great, thank okay. you. And then the only last thing I have too, and I'm going to defer to Jane a little bit here because um, we did have discussions with. Um, Mark Sullivan yesterday, the OPM on the library project. I know we had voted um, last week to um, hold some payments and Jane tried to get some information um, from Mark uh, today. I was not CC'd on any email, so Jane, I don't know if you got anything, um, but just it seems like he has been working somewhat uh, pro bono for the town for the past several months because his contract ended uh, a, a month ago or a couple months ago. So, uh, Jane, I don't know if you have any information that you could share that would be more accurate than what I'm uh, bumbling through here. So my my assessment of the situation is that there has been a lack of communication, but Mark is not the source of it. Mark is working quite well with the library trustees and the building committee, keeping their punch list up to date. Some of the issues that came up in question were, um, I'll call them impromptu meetings that DPW had when they saw something going wrong, but there wasn't time to um, call in the directors or the trustees because it was happening right then and they had jobs. So in that sense, yes, there was lack of communication, but in terms of the town's best interest, for instance, back in September, they wanted to stop the paving job because it would not be properly done. And that's that's where the whole conflict started because these meetings kept happening and nobody up the scale, if you will, was notified because they just sort of happened. Anyway, I, I would move that we go ahead and pay the OPM. Out of their contingency fund. No, the OPM still has money from his salary that's been spread out across the period. He hasn't asked for extra. He's working. He had a basic contract that ended in June, but he has continued. Both he and the architect recognized that this project was going to go longer. And frankly, unlike the senior center OPM, who asked for an extension to his contract, Mark has just been working for nothing but spread out the payments. Yeah, this I'll is second her uh, Jane's motion. Uh, motion by Jane, second by Christian. Yeah, this is just a regular monthly invoice payment that we just held last week. So I think we've cleared up the issue. Um, so I don't. Okay. Here. Roll uh, call the. Oh, sorry, David. No, any further discussion on that? No. no. Go ahead, Jennifer. Roll call vote. Phil. Yes. Uh, Chunglo. Yes. Stanley. Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> last, last week, Allison sent us the uh, 
um, sheets of the, uh, the uh, dates and and uh, the uh, what am I trying to say here? The uh, punch list or the dates of complete. <coughs> so I don't know if all of you have seen it or not. I'm sorry, John. What one were you? What punch list? The one Allison sent last week. Yeah, she sent it last week. I read through it, and a lot of it's dated. Uh, on the side, did you read through that, uh, Christian, or not? I'm, you're still breaking up for me, but but I know anything that was on the punch list, it seemed like it's being addressed right now, but I guess I don't know particular items if they're being addressed. If there were things with the fire department or the building inspector, those are being addressed, and I know there's you know, some... Um, documentation or manual requirements, you know, in the form of creating manuals that needs to be done and a video for the HVAC system. So all that's kind of underway, but I don't know what else there would be specifically, but it seems like trying to get some better communication there and they're addressing the issues. I will say that uh, part of the communication issue has been with subcontractors that I was watching last week and today. Um, and yes, the paving is going to be done, but there is, as Christian said, repairs to be done. So that's part of the uh, surface needs to be milled before the uh, first coat can be put on. And finding a miller for pavement takes a little time. So that's hopefully happening midweek. And then they would do the paving on Saturday. That'll be okay. good. They're gonna, they're gonna address the DPW is gonna address. I see them walking around today. Uh, the entrance and the lap joints that go to the senior center, correct? Yes, I was there. Very adamant about those. And I think Scott was there today, correct? The That's correct. Things the DPW. Yes. Um, yeah. And Tommy was there. So. I think everything, and Mark was there, and Phil O'Brien was there. I mean, all God's children were present at that meeting, so it was fine. Good. All right, so anything else with the library? I'm good. Thank you. All right, and then uh, how about the fire station? I see fire trucks parked there now, so that's uh, progress. There are, and they actually have uh, trainings going on there for, like, regional trainings on weekends. Um, so building is starting to get used. So, uh, happy about that. We still haven't, uh, finished the lawn there yet, but that will come, um, uh, probably more like now the spring I was assume instead of right now. So, uh, that will get taken care of and everything seems to be up and running. Okay. Jane, anything from the senior center? No. All right. Um, I'm going to wait on the cleaning bid and then also uh, Dr. Mulzer is going to jump on for a few minutes after the public forum to give a quick update on the governor's orders and how it affects Hadley based on what just came out. I guess it was Monday, maybe Monday or Friday. I forget. So um, I know we're a few minutes early, but is that okay to roll into the public forum at this point? Okay. Mm -hmm. David, are you ready for that? Yes, I'm going to share the screen. Okay. And everybody should see the slide. There. Everybody see that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, tonight we're talking about the special town meeting and we're reviewing the warrant. The special town meeting is scheduled for Saturday, November 14th, 2020. Welcome and thank you. Thanks for the municipal employees for the work that they do, the departments, the volunteers, Hadley Media and uh, for the viewing Hadley voters. The intent of the forum tonight is to present uh, information to provide voters with an overview and context for the special town meeting, 
to improve voters' understanding of individual warrant articles and offer voters an opportunity to ask questions. The forum is not intended to be a mini town meeting. We're not gonna take any votes favorable or unfavorable. It's not intended to be a uh, platform to provide any group or individual the opportunity to advocate for an article or speak against any article. And please attend the special town meeting Saturday, November 14th at 1 p.m. at the public safety complex at 15 East Street, and the, we'll talk about some of the logistics. It's gonna be partially exterior and partially under shelter in the garage bay. We'll move all the equipment out and we can set up for, I think, 65 seats within the garage that are socially distant. Um, all attendees are strongly urged to wear masks and seizable clothes. Seating will maintain social distancing and we have done everything that we can to trim the warrant to limit the length of time that town meeting needs to, uh, to uh, uh, proceed so that we're enhancing public health. Carolyn, do you wanna talk about the consent agenda? Sure. 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 Sorry about that. Am I? Yeah. Um, the consent agenda is what I appreciate David has called the sweep, involving sweep articles. Um, and so uh, it involves whether it's um, re paying prior bills, uh, if they were, um, if something was, uh, took place at the end of last fiscal year, but they weren't invoiced until afterwards, um, you can't pay that out of the preceding year. Uh, there were some invoices that were charged inappropriately, so it's reimbursing an account um, and just cleaning up some of the old, some articles where projects haven't taken place and the money has been sitting there. So it's what, uh, again, what is cleaning up. It's what David has, I, I, I think that term appropriately explains what this is. There's no debate. Um, it's just, um, it, there's, uh, uh, approved by the select board, approved by the finance committee. Uh, are Did there I miss any questions? anything, David? Are there any questions? Hearing none, article two with the changing the general fund budget for FY21. Carolyn, do you wanna to speak to this issue? Sure, just what's outlined here is um, the significant features is the budget is balanced. Uh, level services were done as, as they were able to. Um, we do some services when necessary. There was no enhanced services. Uh, use of reserve funds to reduce the impact on taxes and um, early pay down of $100,000 of debt principal for, um, to help with future capital and um, just following David's uh, fantastic management policies that again helped with that AAA bond rating and um, set up conditions for a successful FY 2022 budget. And I just have to do an editorial to watch David and Dan and the finance team work this hard to make this happen. It was really impressive and it was, it was really a great experience to be a part of that. They work really hard for the town. Are there any questions? I've got a um, question actually about the stabilization. So is that on another slide or is that on this one? That's on this one. Okay. Um, and I didn't realize it was a public forum. So I know what the rules are because I was actually, I, so I can't advocate, right? Um, so I guess the question I have is, um, I just happened to sit through the last select board meeting and, and listen to the presentation about the um, 375 coming from stabilization and, and how everybody got to this point. And my understanding is that the tax rate was gonna go from, I think it was $12.78 down to $12.15. And then there was a um, movement to take another 155 out of stabilization to bring it down to a flat $12. So, you know, I, 
no issue at all recognizing, um, you know, the concern about taxpayers and COVID relief and all of that. But I'm just wondering about the necessity of moving that other $155,000. And, and honestly, it really worries me. Um, you know, I'm not really sure how necessary it is. My understanding from uh, the collector is that collections have actually been excellent. There really hasn't been a degradation. And I had a little bit of conversation uh, with the assessor too, trying to understand, you know, how many people, um, how many households would be affected. And it sounds like this is actually going to cause a fair number of households not only to stay um, flat with their taxes, which sounded like was the goal of the select board that, you know, people wouldn't have their taxes go up. But it looks like an awful lot of people are actually going to have their taxes go down. Um, and having been around the block a few times, um, I would actually be worried um, being you guys, the finance committee and the new town administrator um, a couple of years from now, because if anything goes wrong, meaning, you know, uh, the, the impact of um, the current situation we're in is more prolonged and we don't see revenue recovery. I mean, one, once you give away that 15 cents on the tax rate, it's it's gone. It's not. It's just money that's never going to come back into the town. You know, it's it's a it's a gimme. So, you know, I think about department heads who are towing the line and maybe wanting to make some enhancements or do things in future years. And I'm just worried that um, even for the sake of $155,000, if you can hang on to that revenue um, and rely on the collector, if anybody does run into trouble to do the wonderful job she's always done, which is get into payment plans with people, um, you know, I'd be more inclined to think that would be the way to go. And and maybe there's been more discovery um, on this, but that's just, you know, what I was concerned about. And I'm just wondering if anybody can speak to that. I mean, do we re really need that 15 cents? Um, and if not, I'd love to see you hang on to it. So the, um, the 375 that were just to be clear, the 375 we're borrowing from ourselves, basically it's coming from the school and going back in there. I just want to be clear with people that we're not taking 375 plus 155 out of stabilization permanently. Right. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's, um, from what I heard from Dan was in the assessor's office was I didn't hear about anybody's taxes going down. I heard that would keep the bills the same. And that of course, if how, you know, people did additions or remodeling things like that, some people would still see an increase, obviously if they did things that increased the value of their home. So maybe if Dan's on here still, maybe he can chime in, but that's, this is the first I'm hearing of people's taxes going down. Yeah. What, what's going to happen is the, the $12 rate will level fund the average tax bill at 4202. The valuation changes from the reassessment. Uh, what's going to happen is basically about a thousand people are going to see a decrease in their tax bill and 600 or so will see an increase. Now these decreases could be minor. The increases could be minor. Just, I, I looked at the select board earlier this week. Uh, Two are going up. One would be a dollar thirty-three. One would be six dollars and fifty-four cents. And three are dropping by fifteen dollars, thirty-four dollars, and seventy-three dollars. That's just a, a shift in the values, where the people that are going down might have seen a, a larger increase last year or the year before than other people. Most of the people that are going to see a large increase, a hundred dollars plus, did work on their property but there are still some people that will see an increase uh, in the 25 to hundred dollar range. Okay. I, you know, again, I, I'm just, if, if I were you, um, once, once people's tax rates go down and, and you can talk to your blue in the face, we all know this, they only remember one year. Um, so next year, you know, and, and David, I, I heard you say last time that, you know, if things didn't go well, you know, you, the town could even find itself in a situation where we might need to 
be seriously looking at budget cuts, which, which could involve people. And, and that's something that we've always shied away from in Hadley. And I just hate to have people feel euphoric this year and say, yeah, you know, my taxes went down $50 or they stayed the same or whatever, only to turn around and then be faced with a much more significant increase in the future. And then people screaming bloody murder about it, you know? Yeah, I don't know what we do. I know for me too, I agree with Molly here is it's a slippery slope of reducing that tax rate because, you know, we go from 1276 to 12, then we're back to 1215, then it's 13, you know, it starts bouncing around and that's what people focus on. And even though there's all this other background information, it's that about valuation and um, that on top of it, where it's level funding, it is tricky when we're trying to convince people that we're not messing with the numbers all over the place when they're changing so drastically. And you can't ignore the uh, sewer and water rates as well. And there's a high likelihood, I would imagine, you're going to need to be going up on sewer again. Well, yeah. And that's that's the thing. We're, we're not going to be able to ex escape increases on everything. And sewer is probably going to have to go up just because of the lack of revenue that came in this year with no hotels being in use and you know, everything else related to COVID. But um, as far as, you know, we chose to give all the town employees, you know, a 2% increase last year on their pay. We didn't need to do that, but we chose to do that because we thought it was deserved and something that needed to be done. So it's kind of hard to tell taxpayers who may still be paying their tax bills, but may be struggling in other areas that we're giving town employees raises, but yet we can't cut anything or reduce our expenditures or give taxpayers a break on the other hand. So that that's where I'm coming from on this is that, um, yeah, we, next year, who knows if things are bad, we may need to look at layoffs or other cuts, but in the meantime, I mean, we, we got to work with the, the data that we have basically, you know, in the situation and with the way this stuff keeps changing weekly, monthly, who knows, um, you know, it's, but that, that's where I'm coming from on it. But I think the I think the question that we have to ask, and I and I you know I, I toyed with this. I thought it was a great idea last week. Of course, nobody wants an increase in their taxes, um, but you know me, I've been kind of a stickler, sticking sticking with that two million at uh, stabilization. So for me to even dwindle on down to think make it lower um, took a lot of thought. And then I've been thinking about it this week and. Is it so wrong to do like I think uh, Dan Assessor Zomiak? Zomiak, are we uh, looking at um, fifteen cents, twelve fifteen? It would give probably fifty-two dollars. Is that right for this year? Uh, fifteen cents on the average bill would be an additional fifty-two dollars. Yeah. I will put the video on. How's that? <laughs> And if and if we waited till next year and the assessments went up and everything, people could face a three hundred dollar increase. Is that what I heard last week? Correct. Uh, looking at the the sales that have occurred this year, we're probably going to be able to hold values where they are right now, mm -hmm. but the the tax bill would probably go up about eighty five cents. Okay, so we would be, go up to twelve twelve eighty five next year. Be somewhere around twelve eighty five, and and would be about a three hundred dollar increase for the average house if we maxed out the levy. Was that but th was that without increasing it this year the fifteen cents, Dan, or was that just keeping it at twelve dollars? Uh, that's keeping it at at or having a twelve dollar rate. It would go up okay. three hundred. All right, so we would go up to twelve eighty twelve eighty five next year from twelve to twelve eighty five. Would yes. that be the, would that be the same if we did the three fifteen and then we would go up again to twelve eighty five next year, from fifteen to eighty five? Yeah, if you if you left it at twelve fifteen, it would if you maxed out the levy for fiscal twenty two, it would still go up to twelve eighty five. So the they would still be paying the same amount next year, but they wouldn't have the decrease or the the lower tax bill this year. So. Okay. And they also wouldn't have as large an increase next year when that happened, which I think is, as Molly was saying, that's where people are going to see it. Last, mm -hmm. last week, Dan said that the increase last year in taxes had been $189, I think. 
this year, if we don't reduce it to 12, but leave it at 12, 15, we're talking about the average household with a $4 a month, $4.33 a month increase. And I think in order psychologically to keep the town in a better place, we should reconsider this. Yeah, well, so what you're, you're trying to make the argument that you're gonna go up $50 this year, so that way you can only go up $250 next year when people are still paying the same amount and they're, they're getting hit two years in a row for being the same amount. So that's, uh, yeah, well, I mean, we can make this argument on the town meeting floor, but. Um, exactly. It's, and here, it's, anybody mention anyone on fixed incomes, uh, on social security and on and on. Do you, you want me those seniors would be most effective? Again? Well, I, I certainly, I, you know, I certainly think that we, it, it brings, we won't make any decision tonight because that's not what we're doing, but I think it, it, it will bring discussion on Saturday, the 14th about whether or not people want to do the 15 or the 85. I think that'll be a discussion at that day. Yep. Correct. So yep. that means somebody has to make the motion on town meeting floor out in the, uh, the, Gale force wins potentially. So, <laughs> um, so I mean, I'm, I'll be the bad guy on that one. Um, I'm not sure how people, you know, would react to it, but again, maybe they're, you know, I know and I, I feel for Dan because I know sometimes he's in a spot and people are asking him to put, you know, throw out numbers on the fly. So, you know, maybe Dan will have a little bit more time between now and then. Um, and if the numbers shake out differently, that's fine. But, Again, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be holding the bag next year because people are going to be really upset. Because um, don't forget, a lot of people it's escrow payments, right? So they're making if they have a mortgage, they're making their payments through the bank. Um, and the bank, all of a sudden, you get that statement, and wham, you know your your payments gone up that much. Um, and that's when the phone calls start coming in. So uh, I, I do think it would be better for people to absorb fifty dollar increase. Um, you know, that's a dollar, you know, a week compared to jumping up to $300. Well, and, and as I say, I think it'll play out on town meeting. And like you say, give Dan time to shake the numbers or see if that's exactly what will happen. And I guess we'll go from there next week. Okay. Sounds good. I'm all in favor of the 375. I have to say that much because that's going mm -hmm. back in. Yeah. I'm with that. But I'm sitting on that fence and the pickets hurt, let me tell you. Are there any more <laughs> questions about the uh, Article 2? <laughs> it took me a minute. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. You're a little slow tonight, Molly. <laughs> Going once, going twice. Okay, move it along. Uh, on the article six, Joyce and Dan, this is your article. Uh, yeah, I'll do a quick presentation on this. Uh, what I'd like to do first is just say what clause 41A is, and that's a property tax deferral program for seniors. To qualify, an applicant has to be 65 years of age at the start of the fiscal year, which is July 1st. They must own the property and must occupy the property as their domicile. If they meet those qualifications and their, their income and their spouse's income have a combined gross receipts of 20000 or less, they can defer any part or all of their property taxes each year. Right now, we currently charge 8% interest on that. The total amount of the deferral is limited to 50% of the assessed value of the property. Right now, we only have one person that takes advantage of this. What we're asking to do here is proposing changing the interest rate because there aren't really any seniors that take advantage of this. And we feel that an 8% interest rate is quite high in the current economic climate and that there are taxpayers who might take advantage of this program if the rate were reduced so that they would not have to make the choice between paying for their taxes or paying for heat, medication, or food. If the rate were changed to 4%, this would result in savings for a senior in the average assessed home of about $170 a year for each fiscal year that the tax is deferred. Many communities that offer this 
have already reduced their interest rates to 4% or lower. And the rate reduction would not take effect for this fiscal year, but would start in fiscal year 22. Hey, Dan, so just, you said this can mean the difference between someone paying for food or paying for taxes, right? Uh, yeah, in, in the past, we've had people that have qualified for exemptions that had to choose between paying their taxes or buying food or medication or even uh -huh. heat, paying for heat. All right, sounds like a good idea, just like saving $50 a year in taxes, like on the last article would be. Uh -huh. Yeah, sounds, sounds like good to me. Yeah. Are there any questions? No. Next. Christian Stanley, the, you're the chair of the Capital Planning Committee. Um, there are seven capital projects on the warrant. Yeah, so these are the capital projects for the, the year. All these projects are um, borrowed within the levy or, you know, um, items that are, have been scheduled where that's coming out of water reserves, Hadley Media Reserves. So um, nothing here would go to debt, debt exclusion vote or anything along those lines. Everything here is already in the budget. Um, the first one is the Callahan well, number one reconditioning for $25,000 that comes out of water reserves. That's something that's been going on for years. Um, Hadley media equipment for $18,000 that is coming out of the Hadley media reserves. And that's kind of their annual equipment purchase. Um, and both of those are coming out of those enterprise fund reserves. Then next we have police cruiser for 63,000. Again, this is something that we've been doing every year is updating our police cruiser fleet, fleet um, and getting them into the best condition possible. The police cruisers are now uh, hybrid cruisers. So this is a B for a hybrid cruiser. Um, next on the list, is police ballistic vests for $21,250. This again is a semi-regular purchase. I forget how many years it is, but it's every three years or somewhere around there, they would, the police need new ballistic vests. Next is a fire department administrative vehicle for $64,575. This would be for the deputy fire chief. Um, currently, he's driving a, um, a UMass surplus car that whenever I see it, I'm surprised it's still running on the road. So this would be getting him a vehicle that is um, adequate and similar with the rest of our fleet. Um, is there a question there? Dr. Bow is not going to... No, somebody not on mute. Okay. Um, Number six would be the fire department emergency extrication equipment. Because These are large airbags that the fire department uses to um, raise vehicles, um, anything that would require lifting of a large object where they get the airbags underneath, inflate them, and then are able to roll it over or get someone out, whatever it might be. Um, and lastly is a DPW mower for $40,000. And this would be replacing a current motor mower that is used to mow um, the town common as well as the Turka Park. So those are all the capital items for this budget year. Are there any questions? Article eight is the CPA, the first of two CPA articles. This is for emergency COVID-19 rental relief. Um, Molly, I think that this is your uh, uh, article. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so this article um, is a request on the part of the Hadley Housing and Economic Development Committee on behalf of the select board um, to request that the CPA uh, funds and specifically the housing um, pool of CPA monies uh, set aside a hundred thousand uh, dollars 
to be um, to be a vehicle to provide rent relief for qualified applicants. Um, to be clear, this hundred thousand um, dollars would be uh, dealt with on a first come, first serve basis. People would need to meet um, specific criteria. They would have to prove that um, any hardship um, and inability for them to pay rent was directly an impact of uh, COVID-19. And that only applies for Hadley residents and only applies to residential rental. So this is not a commercial related article in any way. And um, any monies that are unexpended um, at the end of a two year time frame would be turned back to CPA consistent with other articles. Um, the other thing to point out is that this hundred thousand dollars that's part of the housing pool, uh, currently there is no planned use for that money. So we aren't taking um, the hundred thousand dollars away from, you know, it, it, there's not an opportunity cost here. So there, there, this money isn't being earmarked for anything else at the moment. Uh, what do you have for dinner? Any questions? Article nine is the second CPA article. This is uh, for three cemetery restoration projects. And Alan Weinberg, I think you may be speaking to this article. Sure. So uh, we have three cemetery projects this year. We combined them into one article at the request of the select board. Uh, we're requesting $60,000 from Community Preservation Act funds for restoring 94 gravestones at the North Hadley Cemetery and $30,000. Hey, you for classes yet? I'm sorry. What was that? Go ahead, Al. Okay. Uh, was that cemetery humor? Was that? Okay, no. Uh, so, the, and the second project is $30,000 for restoration of 42 gravestones at the Russellville Cemetery. These include gravestones which are fallen, broken, or severely leaning. And the CPA has generously pre previously funded gravestone work at Old Hadley, Hockenham, and Plainville cemeteries. And that work is ongoing. <clears throat> In addition, we're requesting $65,000 to remove the deteriorated and dilapidated and um, falling down stone wall at the Hockenham Cemetery and to install uh, a granite post and steel chain. Uh, fence um, in, in its place. Uh, we'll be using some of the stone from the uh, existing stone wall to uh, construct pillars at the entrance gates, and that will also that'll help memorialize the uh, the former stone wall. Um, <clears throat> both these projects um, were um, worked on with the historical commission. They support these these projects. The Hockenham Village Association supports the fence project. And of course, we've done this um, in consultation with DPW and we'll continue to uh, work with DPW on finalizing the plans if we get approved. That's it. Thank you. Any questions? Moving along to article 10. This is first of two planning board zoning article uh, amendments. Um, uh, Bill and Jim, are you here? Jim is here. Yeah, Bill's here. Do you want to sp speak to this article, please? Uh, the uh, definitions article is something that we, the, the planning board, been working on for several years. Um, Tim Nyhart was really eager to get this going back when he was building inspector. And we've had input from uh, him and Tom and PVPC. And we've basically taken a lot of the definitions that are in various sections of the zoning bylaw um, and putting them into one so that they're not scattered all over. And we reference certain sections within the definitions back to the sections they came from. So they, they're kind of unique to those sections in some cases. And we've added definitions um, in some things where there were no definitions, such as building height, what does it mean to the town of Hadley zoning bylaw, and stuff like that. Uh, 
That's about it. All right. Any questions on this? Hearing none, I'm moving on to Article 11. This is the second of two articles, the first one at the annual town meeting, and this is the follow-up for Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Right. At the last, well, the last town meeting, I think it was the last town meeting, we adopted the municipal heavy um, inclusionary zoning, or the, the, the affordable trust fund, which would allow developers to put money into the fund as an option to providing the housing affordable housing on site. And now this is part of the zoning bylaw, which gives a formula um, or will provide a formula within, within the planning board regulations. And it'll define how much money should the developer decide to donate what would be required, how much money would be required. Any questions? Hearing none, the final article is adoption of the stretch energy, energy code. Uh, and uh, David, Phil, I think you were going to speak to this issue. Sure. Uh, Christian, you okay with me? I know this was kind of your project with the Green Committee. That's, that's fine with me. Okay. Go for it. All right. All right. Uh, so the stretch energy code is uh, something that's coming eventually. Um, all across uh, Massachusetts, but this is basically adopting this um, more energy efficient building code uh, voluntarily ahead of time. Most um, uh, contractors are already doing these uh, required, uh, I guess, building activities um, in, on projects that they're building in other communities already. So by doing this, this gets us a step closer to the green, uh, being a green community and joining the green community program, which enables us to be eligible for grants and, and other benefits. And so uh, this does add a small bit of cost to building a new house but uh, generally the cost is offset by uh, grants, tax incentives, things along those lines. And my understanding is that existing homes and remodels are not subject to uh, this stretch. Code. And I think um, Mark is here, Christian, is he here? Yes, I'm here. Uh, Mark, did I get that pretty much right? Uh, you're on mute if you're talking. No. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Okay, um, that's correct. It um, it uh, it doesn't apply to existing homes um, or remodels. It has to be a complete. If it if it was a remodel, it have to be a complete down to the studs, and that's really up to the the um, the code official. Um, it only applies to new construction for residential and commercial. Okay. So any questions on that? I think in the presentation we saw earlier, there was a map of how many of the towns in Massachusetts already belong. I assume that will be shown at town meeting. Well, Jane, I, mean, I can speak to this. And this is Jack Sikowski. Um, certainly we have the map on the website. Um, that's something that we could post um, during the meeting, there are currently 271 cities and towns in Massachusetts that are already part of the Green Communities Program, and that's out of 351 cities and towns in the state, so it's about 80%. Okay. Any further comments? Yeah, if I could add, I would also add to David's selling point that um, not just grants and things like that, but it would also arguably, you know, any increase in cost in, in constructing these homes would be recouped over time in the energy, you know, increased energy savings. Okay. Any further comments? That's the end of the warrant, 12 articles uh, and uh, Four of them are on the consent agenda. Special town meeting is two Saturdays from now, at 1 p.m. at the public safety complex. Please dress for exterior weather. 
Uh, and please bring your masks because uh, we want to do the town's business, but we also want to keep everybody hale and healthy. Thank you for your participation. And I'm going to turn the meeting back over to the chair. All right, thank you, David. And so we'll continue on is, um, actually let's do, is Dr. Moser here? I see, yep, there she is. She's hiding behind the mask there. <laughs> here she is hiding behind the mask. Sorry, I'm at the hospital. That's okay. Uh, do you uh, want to take a minute to update us on the changes? Yeah, first of all, thanks for, for uh, giving us the chance to do this, uh, David, most appreciated. Um, the governor issued new orders uh, this past Monday and uh, they go into effect at 12.01 a.m. on Friday. Uh, uh, the first was a stay-at-home advisory, uh, asking people to stay home between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m., except for, you know, work or a grocery store. Um, businesses are to close from 9.30 p.m. to 5 a.m. Uh, this includes restaurants, movie theaters, performance venues, and uh, gyms. Restaurants can continue uh, takeout service after 9.30 p.m. and uh, no alcohol or cannabis sales after 9.30. Um, and this includes uh, our convenience stores. In other words, they can stay open, but they can't sell alcohol after 9.30. Um, the uh, face covering uh, order has been uh, broadened. All persons under five are required to wear a face covering when in a public location, both indoor and outdoor, regardless of social distancing. So even with social distancing, everyone inside, outside of a building, if you are not in your home and you are not in your car with household members, uh, you need to be wearing uh, a face covering. It includes public streets, ways, and office spaces. Um, if uh, there's also another change, uh, first, what remains constant is if an individual refuses to wear a mask, uh, claiming that they have a medical exemption, um, they, can, they have to be allowed into a retail or a business. Um, however, if someone is an employee or a school student, and they are claiming a medical exemption, uh, it is now allowed for the school or the employer to ask them to uh, provide uh, documentation from a physician for the medical exemption. So that's, that's new. Uh, businesses cannot do that to a customer that wants to come in, but schools or um, uh, employers are allowed to uh, to ask for that uh, medical documentation. Um, gatherings, uh, there's been changes in a private residence, no more than 10 people indoors. Uh, outdoors in a private residence, the number is 25. If you have more than 10 people gathered outside on your property, uh, if there's more than 10 people, everybody has to be wearing a face covering, uh, even if you're in your backyard. Um, you know, for Hadley, we have uh, two vulnerable populations, our seniors and, and our schools. We want to keep our seniors safe and we want to keep our schools open. And I think um, these new guidelines are designed to protect them by focusing on uh, what seems to be the current spreaders, which is people age 12 to 30 who are both infected and also asymptomatic. Um, so that's a review and, you know, what would the Board of Health like from the town to help support our efforts? I guess we would ask for us all to be role models uh, and have all our town employees uh, wearing a face covering unless they are in their home or in their private vehicle. And, um, you know, while the Board of Health might be notified of large gatherings, you know, we may receive complaints you know, we don't have the ability to act alone. We, you know, we need, we're going to, in that kind of a situation, we really need some town help, town cooperation. Um, and, uh, you know, this time of year has lots of potential problem opportunities. We've got family gatherings, holiday parties. We have our big box stores where there's going to be a rush for shopping. You know, I don't know if they're having the Black Friday this year. 
And the other, you know, big concern is that we have thousands of college students um, who, uh, since classes are ending before November, those students will no longer, as far as I know, be being tested or monitored by the university. Uh, but they will be living uh, amongst us. And, um, you know, we the Board of Health, we don't have the answers, but, you know, these type of events, you know, where COVID or, or where COVID's going to spread in Hadley. So, uh, you know, we hope we can keep uh, messaging to our community, you know, keep people as mindful as possible. And, you know, I would just finish, I just, you know, as a physician, I, I can say, you know, this is going to be a rough winter. And uh, if we can all collaborate, uh, you know, we can work together to keep Hadley as safe as possible. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Dr. Mosel? Yes. Didn't I read something or hear something, <clears throat> excuse me, about they have changed what they feel the um, time and exposure to people is? That is, it can yes. be over a 24 hour period. Could you clear that That's up, please? Yeah, that's, um, you know, that their help, that, that's a change in the definition of a close contact. Uh, a close contact is someone who has close contact with a documented COVID positive case, first of all. Okay, it's, it's not someone who they may have been exposed. In other, in other words, to be a close contact, that person has to have been tested, PCR tested positive for COVID-19. In that case, it used to be, if you were within, you know, six feet of that person for 15 minutes, a length of 15 minutes, that was considered a close contact. That has been somewhat expanded in the sense that it doesn't have to be 15 minutes in a clump. It's 15 minutes over 24 hours. So you could have had three five minute exposures to that person over a period of 24 hours, you would be considered then, it would be considered a close contact. Is that, is that clear? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's gonna, uh, well, I would hope anyway that many of us will be getting questions. I was just out at, uh, what is that place? The Texas Roadhouse. I was following up on a complaint at the Texas Roadhouse. And, you know, it was great in the sense that, I, you know, I met the guy, the manager there, and he had a lot of questions. You know, I think a lot of businesses are confused. Um, and I was so glad that I was, was able to answer those. So, you know, if you hear of businesses or people who are confused or have questions, please, please have them get in touch with me. Any other uh, board members have questions? I would just ask, do we, I know the uh, Massachusetts map gets updated on Thursdays, but is there any change in case count in Hadley or are we still pretty much in the gray, so to speak? You know, I, I um, Emma has access to the that Maven reporting system. I do not have access to it. Um, I do know that we had, uh, two new reports of cases this week, but um, I, I can speak to Emma and, uh, and certainly, uh, you know, send out an email to update on, on our number of cases. I think Emma's here. Is, is Joyce talking? I, I don't know if she was saying something. Nope. Is Emma on the meeting? I don't see her. I mean, do do we have a general sense in you know amongst us of you know what how we would respond if we were reported you know got a report of a large gathering? I mean, do we have a plan? I I don't I don't think we have a plan, Susan. I you know uh, we see or we know where. Um, there are some hot spots for students where they live. Um, certainly you can drive around town and see the number of cars um, that are at certain houses. And to tell you the truth, I don't know what to do with that when I see that, because I know that 12 or 15 people aren't living in that house. Um, so what do you do? Um, how do you, how do you rectify that? Where are they going to school? There are students 
because they've been designated as student houses. Um, and you see some families gathering. Uh, they're having outdoor you know, parties and things like that. What, what do we do? I mean, I'm hoping that people are being safe because I know that there are an increase of um, people with COVID, even in this area, they may not be in Hadley, uh, but they are at other areas in this community, you know, community be, mean, meaning Hampshire County. Right. Um, we have had more COVID patients at the hospital. Yeah. Um, we have had uh, some employees at the hospital. We had an email on that. Um, so, you know, things, things are not on the downswing right now. So, uh, no, things are definitely heating up. I mean, yeah, you yeah, know, I, I agree with you, but I don't, I don't know where to go when people, you know, are doing these parties on their own or whatever. I mean, I, I just would like people to be smart about even though their own family gatherings, cause you don't know where people have been. And I think we need to keep the number and please try to do that, you know, keep it at 10, keep it at whatever you need to have. Um, even though you say, well, they're all related. Well, they're all related, but you don't know where they've been or who they've been in contact with. So, I mean, you, you just have to be smart about it, you know, and, and keep yourself safe. You know, that's what you want to do. Well, you know, those are, those are very wise words. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm just asking under this, just because, you know, the Board of Health is, you know, charged by the state with, you know, being the so-called, you know, enforcers here. But, you know, if, if I, you know, if somebody calls the Board of Health and says, you know, there's a big party going on next door here, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, you know, little old me, I, you know, I don't feel comfortable, you know, approaching that that situation alone. I mean, I would need to know that I had some type of, you know, police or, you know, some type of backup. Mm -hmm. And and I think, I think you have a right at that moment is what I'm saying that if you need to go and check on something that, you know, you certainly have the right to have uh, the police that's on call at the time or that are on the road when we have police officers working every shift. And if you're going to go to a facility and check something out, I think you have the right um, to ask for assistance so that you're safe. You feel safe when you're going you to know, do I mean, that. You know, we're, we're not, we're not driving around looking for trouble. I'm just saying no. you know, I'm kind yeah. of in an awkward position there. If, you know, if I get a call, mm -hmm. so um, I, you know, hopefully that won't happen. I, I guess if it does, then I would, I would call the police and ask them to, to meet me there. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would think that you would do that, Susan. I think that's what they're there yeah. for. They're there to assist you as well as yeah. all of our citizens and everything. I think that's, that's the purpose of it all. Absolutely. Okay. Aren't they also, aren't they also supposed to enforce the governor's orders about group gathering? Yes, they are. So yeah. I think it's appropriate that if you find a group gathering and you need reinforcements, backups or supports, you would call them. Yeah. Yeah. And I would think that would you know, be, as long as they're on board with that, you know, I don't want to get into any, you know, any uncomfortable situations. Why don't, why don't I have that conversation with Mike since I'm, I'm okay. the lazy on person right. um, and I'll get back to you, Susan. I will call Mike yeah. tomorrow. You know, I'm conflict averse. So yeah. Uh, I, our, yeah. our other, our quickly, our other big plan was to uh, go to the grocery stores and, Put GPS markers on all the really large turkeys, so <laughs> we could see who was taking them home, and then we could do raids on Thanksgiving Day, and we could fine each home five hundred dollars, which would go a long way towards uh, helping us, uh, you know, <laughs> capture recapture some lost revenues. Oh my God, that you have such a great sense of humor. Good idea, right? <laughs> Just yeah. Be careful with conspiracy theories these days. You never know. <laughs> but now, but now, who but says it's saying, humor? Yeah. I'd go along if I got to eat turkey. <laughs> but now they're saying that people are only buying twelve-pound birds, so maybe somebody's buying two twelve-pound birds. <laughs> well, you you know you figure one pound for each person, then you got to give them a couple of pounds for leftovers. So this is true. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> 
but I will touch base with Mike right. um, tomorrow and I'll get back to you, Susan. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to uh, 8.1 cleaning bid IFB award. Uh, Carolyn, do you want to give us an update on where we are with this and what the recommendation sure. is? Yeah. So if you remember last week, um, the, a group was asked to get together that involved most of the departments that were um, impacted by the cleaning bid. And so we did. Um, and since last week, you know, having reviewed the whole process and the cleaning bid process um, and meeting with a group, it's become evident to me that the, uh, that the, the process we did follow procurement appropriately. There really was not a legitimate reason, if you really reviewed it, a legitimate reason to reject the next lowest bid, which was Anna's deep cleaning. And according to the bid documents that were advertised, she responded with a reasonable and responsible proposal um, and was definitely the next lowest bidder. And if you remember the lowest bidder who didn't meet the minimum requirements was because of the years of service. The bid proposal said that they needed to be in business for three years. So that was one was pretty clear and blatant. Um, so the, the group got together and we agreed that based on the recommendations um, that I'd like to give the board tonight, which would be to rescind last week's vote, there would be a performance plan, a monitoring plan put in place with, um, if it were to be um, awarded to, the next lowest bidder. So this contract falls under DPW, and um, I think it's appropriate. And Chris and Chris Okafar was at the meeting, and he agrees that he and Gary would monitor the quality of the work of the performance. Based on the input from the department heads, I think what's one of the things that's really clear is each department had who is would be getting that cleaning service has different needs. They do need to fit within the primary bid requirements, but there are, the senior center has some different needs that may be different from DPW, may be different from the town hall. And so we talked a little bit about that, that that's important that we get that out in the open and that um, the, whoever gets that award understands that, that um, they need to know what each expectation is of each department for cleaning but again, as long as it is in the general requirements that are set in the bid documents. Um, so the cleaning contract ends June 30th. There's, a, there's always an option for the select board to decide whether to um, uh, renew it. But I think that gave a level of confidence with the group that with uh, monitoring the performance, having some measurable outcomes um, that uh, I think clearly by, you know, well before June 30th, hopefully by April, there'd be an understanding of whether uh, the requirements were being met and everyone was satisfied with the service. And I also suggested um, that we uh, meet as soon as possible just to kind of go over the, the, the scope of work and make sure it's aligned with that bid document. So I, my recommendation would be that there to, to you, the select board, is that you would rescind, make a mo two separate motions to, um, I think it's the best interest of the town that you would take two uh, motions. One, to rescind the vote from last week, which was to reject the lowest, reject Anna's cleaning, deep cleaning, and then um, to award that, that document, do a separate motion to award that to Anna's deep cleaning. So that would be my recommendation. Again, I think it is the best interest of the town. I think the bid documents uh, do speak for themselves. Uh, the planning process next time might go a little bit different with some different type of input, but I think we did, the town did follow procurement and that would be my recommendation for those two motions. Do I have a motion from anybody? I'll move that we rescind the bit, the vote of last week. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Joyce. Any further discussion on this? Yeah, Caroline, I did say in the best interest of the town, my motion was in the best interest of the town to reject all the bids and that is perfectly legal. So I understand that John, but you, you if there's a, if the next 
lowest bidder does meet the requirements. And this is after reviewing it and doing doing some more research into it just to make sure that it, it you can do that. With the way it was followed and the way the documents were presented, you do have to look at the, the next bid up, which was Anna's. And she met, she did meet all of the requirements. And it, just, just a reminder, this is only till June 30th. And we're, we're gonna be monitoring it and working together to make sure each department has feedback and input and any concerns that can be addressed. So it's really only about six months by the time it's awarded. And then we'll go out to bed again. It, that would be up to you guys, yes. Any further discussion? Okay. Jennifer, do a roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Muscovitz? No. Thank you. Four eyes, one no. And then we need another motion. Uh, I'll make the motion to award the contract to Anna's Cleaning Service. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. And Waskevitz? No. Four eyes and one no. Okay. Um, that looks like that's it for the agenda for this evening. So any announcements before we close up? Yes, I have one. The town is looking for volunteers to serve on a committee to consider a bylaw amendment regarding trailers by the river. If you're interested, please email the request to info at hadleyma.org by November 13th. I think the committee is going to consist of two town residents, the building inspector, the fire chief, planning board member, and a member of the select board. Who's setting up this committee, Jane? Um, I think it's a combination of the fire chief and the building inspector and planning. Where, where's CONCOM on this? They're involved with it as, as well. It's actually part of the building oversight committee that's on every week. So they will be a part of it as well. Uh, oh, hi, Mike. How are you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. Um, okay, I just wanted to make sure because they're the ones that should be guiding us on the riverbanks. So uh, I wanted to make sure that they're involved in this. I said I think that's who was involved. So I'll well, add come, come. Uh, I'm saying that I want them involved because they should be. They will be, I'm sure. Okay. Okay. Any other announcements? I don't. <laughs> no, I Joe, this is not seven o'clock. You have to wait. Chief, November yes. November 14th, everybody come out and uh, we need a hundred person uh, limit uh, on to, to get yeah. town meeting to quorum to, to, to do town meeting on November 14th. And it's at uh, East Street at the safety complex and everybody... Come on down. Hopefully it'll be good weather. And, and a note to that is parking is at the uh, elementary school. Is that the plan? Are some overflow parking if there's not enough at the public safety complex? There's definitely not enough parking at the safety complex. So yes, we'll be putting sign boards up, but we're also, the chief and I are most likely going to be implementing a one-way lane on East Street so that there'll be on-street parking for the day like we did for the parade. So um, we will get all that information out to you when the plan's complete. Uh, I just wanted to also, just on behalf of the police chief and myself, just wanted to say thank you to all the folks that came out and helped with our trunk or treat event um, last Friday. I think mm -hmm. we had a really, really nice, safe time. Uh, special thank you to all the firefighters and police officers that set it all up. It was quite a lot of work, but I think everybody had a really nice time from the feedback we've been getting. 
That's great as usual. And we did thank you at the beginning of the meeting um, for helping to make the flow of voting yesterday uh, went very well. So thank you to especially the fire department for setting it up and helping and uh, police for being there also. So um, as I say, it's a great place to live. We all work together. All right, last call for announcements. We're, we're not meeting next week. No. No. Joy. <laughs> you wanted to. I'm and, good. <laughs> are you sure you don't want to add a meeting, Joyce? Oh, if you want, we can. You you name it. What do you got to talk about? We can talk about anything. <laughs> All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn, please? Motion to motion adjourn. To adjourn. And a second. I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> All right, second by Christian. I've got your roll call vote. Roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Tungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Bing. Yes. <laughs> and let's get it. Yes. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Have a safe week. <laughs>